Do you ever get fed up with talking about Columbo, or do you still love it? Well, he and I had an argument. <laughs> it had to do with the cigar. He didn't want me to smoke. No. I mean, let me be clear about this. He didn't mind if I, Peter Falk, gave up cigarettes. But he didn't want to give up his cigar. So I did give up smoking cigarettes. Yeah. But I still have to smoke the cigar when I play Columbo. But do I ever get tired of playing Columbo? No. I ever get tired of talking about him? No. I did notice on the subject of the cigar, Peter, that in more recent episodes, he's carrying the cigar, but it's not lit. Whereas in the 70s, 80s, early 90s, it was always lit. Yes, well, that has to do with this little uh, disagreement that Lieutenant <laughs> and I have had. <laughs> I love it when you talk about the Just One More Thing thing and all the little devices over the years. I mean, I remember one where you'd gone away as Columbo and then two or three minutes must have gone by and then you knocked on the window and shouted out just one more thing. <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I love that moment. Yes, we try and find different ways to deliver that line. And that was uh, one of the ones that tickled me, uh, to close the door and leave and I'm gone and that's it. And then a little knock on the window and there I am again. How do you get it so that we know that you know? I mean, we always know who you suspect, and we always know who you know is the murderer. If well, you see you what also I... saw the murder, and you know who did it, and you know how he did it. But what about if I come in, say, halfway through? We still know by the way you're acting it through. We still know who it is anyway. How do you do that? I can't get in the minds of the viewers, and I always assume that people are seeing the show from the beginning. Yeah. But that's not always correct. As a matter of fact, a guy came up to me, and he said, last night's show, how did that end? Because I fell asleep. <laughs> and I said to him, were you awake when I found the gasoline can? He said, no, I wasn't. <laughs> that was 12 minutes into the show. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> he wanted to know how it ended. He, he only saw it ten minutes. <laughs> now, uh, let me ask you a few little short questions about Columbo. Um, yeah. I don't know if you're going to tell me the answer to this. What's his first name? Well, when um, Faye Dunaway <laughs> committed a crime, yeah. she had an agenda. She didn't want to get caught. So she made a play for Columbo. She uh, acted as though she was attracted to him as a woman. Yeah. And at one point, she said, oh, by the way, what is your first name? And I said, Lieutenant. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. And that's not a proper first <laughs> name. First name. <laughs> OK, the raincoat. You actually have the raincoat at your house, and you keep that? It's not in the Smithsonian or anything like that? The way I tell that to people is, if my second-story closet, mm. if that's the Smithsonian... <laughs> then that's where it is. <laughs> OK. The dog, I mean, successive dogs, all the same dog. You seem to know the dogs very well. Is that actually your dog? No, that is not actually my dog, although we do have eight dogs, but none of them have been on Columbo. <laughs> oh, OK. Uh, the one that I wanted on Columbo, one of mine, asked for too much money. <laughs> yeah, they tend to, don't they? And they've all got agents. <laughs> and what about the car? Is that the same car you've used on the set there forever, or is that like a new car they've built specially for you? No, it is the same car. We went on a hiatus sometime about eight years in the 70s, and the studio sold the two cars that we had. And when we went back on the air, they tried to locate them. One of them was beyond repair. It was in a swamp somewhere. But the other one they found, they brought it back, and we're still using it. Now, I tell you, some of the episodes I've loved have been with Patrick McGowan. I notice that you have, like, several players that would appear, for example, in one show, and then maybe ten shows later they would be a different character in a different show. And Patrick McGowan, I understand, has directed some as well. Is that right? I'm in the process of writing a book. And one of the things that I say in that book is that me, Peter Falk, the character Lieutenant Columbo, and Universal Studios and the NBC Network all owe Patrick McGowan a deep debt. He, as much as anybody else that I could name, is responsible 
for the success of Columbo. He's the only actor in television history that the first two times that he appeared as a guest star won the Emmy both times. Yeah. He has directed Columbo's, he starred in them, and without ever asking for any money, he does an enormous amount of rewriting. He has a tremendous presence. Yeah. He's got a very good mind. As a matter of fact, when we act together, I can actually hear his mind humming. <laughs> <laughs> that would really throw me off. <laughs> yeah. Here's Tim for you. Why is Columbo so enduring, do you think, Peter? Why do we still love him, and why do we enjoy watching him solve crimes still today? I should know the answer to that question, but I answered that question with a question. What does the Emperor of Japan have in common with a teenage Aztec Indian? And people say, well, what? I say, they both love Colombo. <laughs> <laughs> So it has a universal appeal, obviously. That's a good answer. That's a brilliant answer. You can't top that. Listen, thanks very much for talking to us. Good luck with all the projects. I love talking to you. And you can see Columbo, of course, on Channel 5. Also on the uh, other channel. I think it's on the Hallmark Channel as well. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it, Peter Falk. It's been a pleasure, Steve. Nice talking to you. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. Peter Falk, everybody. Peter Falk.